again. Hi, everyone. And uh, today I've chosen to speak about, uh, uh, about Ayurvedic cleanses. And this was a topic that was suggested by Maria. And Maria is not here today, but I really wanted to recognize her support in her. And she's just joined me in this effort. She's like, oh, poor Vaidhinami, she's doing this all by herself. Let me, let me help her with this, with the events and everything. So she gives me very good feedback and thoughts about what's really needed. Um, and she is uh, also very interested in helping newcomers to Ayurveda. Uh, find their path because you know there are so much there's there are a lot of voices out there a lot of people doing great work and uh, sometimes it can get very uh, it can get very uh, daunting and confusing and uh, you know she's helping me in an effort to sort of streamline and bring crisp clarity in the process so that's what it's, it's great to have her okay so this was her idea and i'll start sharing my screen there maria has just come <laughs> oh, <the devil. laughs> okay maria maria we were just like i was just recognizing your support and insight uh in, in um uh if, you know, for everything. And it's just wonderful to have you. Okay. So Ayurvedic cleanses, why, what, who, who not, when, when not, a lot of these questions, right, that come. So when I was preparing the talk, there were some of these questions that I was anticipating that I've laid out, which may be there in people's minds that, uh, or certain impressions that are there in people's minds about whether Ayurvedic cleanses, are they done to flush out the toxins? Because I see, a, I see that language uh, very commonly out there that, you know, cleanse to remove out the toxins. Um, and what are these toxins? Uh, is Ama the toxin? And uh, if Ama is the toxin, do the cleanses flush out the Ama? Um, is Ama's presence or absence the indication to do an Ayurvedic cleanse? Um, for people who don't know what Ama is, you know, I've explained multiple times earlier in the phases of healing as it's the undigested residue from all of the transformative processes. And it is, uh, it, it's become a very common for anybody who is uh, in Ayurveda, uh, within the first few months, they will all learn, hear about Ama, the idea of Ama, at least. And um, there are a lot of misconceptions about Ama as well, but it is a, it's getting into people's vocabulary. And is Ama's presence or absence the indication to do an Ayurveda cleanse? So should you do it when Ama is present or when it's not present? Um, are Ayurvedic cleanses really supposed to be done seasonally? And if so, how and when? Uh, what kind of cleanses really exist in Ayurveda? What is the purpose of all of them? Itself, itself. And knowing where we are at, where you are at, where the people in your family are at, oh, and sorry. developing practices. Can you mute us all? Yeah, um, yeah, let me do that. So, what does it mean to assess yourself to know what you have to eat? What does that mean? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, okay, you might have to chat. Yes. Yes. Okay, thanks. Okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay. All right. So be back. What kind of cleanses uh, exist in Ayurveda? For what purpose? Um, is the same kind of cleanse suggested for all seasons? I, I see this very commonly, what everyone is doing Vedicana for spring and for fall. Uh, can anyone do a cleanse at any point of time? Uh, Kichdi seems to be the universal Ayurvedic cleanse food. 
is it rightly so? So my, my purpose today is just to share what is the ideal thought process in, uh, in Ayurveda so that we can find the be best uh, provider, solution, whoever works for you in your vicinity and you can have an informed conversation, okay? So first question, are Ayurvedic cleanses done to flush out toxins, uh, so as to speak? And the idea is no. Ayurveda uh, did those cleanses, which are the Shodhana process, to expel excessive doshas. Okay. And in the process of doing that, one of the pre stages when you do snehana, that is the one where, so as to speak, the toxins can get, uh, which are lipid soluble, they, they get into, uh, they, get, uh, uh, they get embedded with the gratam, the, the ghipan that we are doing in one of the process, which I'll explain later. And to that extent, it does help to bring out the toxins, but primarily uh, Ayurvedic shodhana processes are done to expel the doshas, to remove the excessive vata, excessive pitta, and excessive kapha. Toxins are not, uh, uh, you know, so it is not done to uh, remove the toxins as we imagine them as material substances, because Right now, when you say the word toxins, it's more about everything that's pervading in our ecosystem in terms of the, the pesticides and the chemicals and the human system apparently in the last three to four decades is bombarded and exposed to 30,000 different chemicals which it had never known. Um, and we are dealing with that. Our DNA is dealing with that on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you know, it's also one of the premise for understanding why do we have cancer, so much cancer in society and all of that. So that's a very different trajectory. But whenever we use the word toxins, people think of that as the chemical toxins that we are, that we are, uh, that we are uh, exposed to. Okay. So it is a secondary uh, outcome that the, uh, the uh, toxins get flushed out. But what gets flushed out are the doshas. Okay. Now, these doshas, they are not physical toxins. What are doshas then? What is really coming out? Like, I, I, what is coming out, right? So doshas are nothing but a group of energies or properties. So when you see the definition that Charaka says, so Charaka says that uh, vata gets aggravated by cold, dry movement, right? Or chala dosha. So the... It is a conglomeration of those properties that gets designated as vata, pitta, and kapha. Okay, so what's going out is rebalancing those energies, okay? and that is very profound because that the the internal biophysics that gets changed with it, the biomechanics that gets changed with it, that is the primary driver. The biochemical parts are the secondary outcomes, okay? So that clarity uh, will be good for us to have. They can <clears throat> ride on gross uh, material substances. So the doshas, they can ride on gross material substances, but they are not constructed by them. So the doshas can ride on ama, the doshas can ride on the mucus, uh, for the kapha, uh, they can ride on some of the enzymes, that is the pitta, but pitta is not equal to enzymes. The mucus and the phlegm is not equal to kapha. It is the kapha property that's getting expressed and that's getting concentrated on the mucus. Okay, So that distinction for the people who who are really getting into the under uh, into the skin of Ayurveda? That is something that would be good for us to know. Um, another example that I've given for that 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 I that I want to give for that is like the property cold, right? So ice is cold, and milk is also cold. So the property cold rides on both ice and milk, and this is a very fundamental way in which Dravigun Vigyan. Uh, the material sciences are taught in Ayurveda. 
where the dravya is different and the properties of the dravya are different. Okay. And because the property is, there is a commonality of the properties through different substances, we can use different substances in our environment to create balance. So that is the premise of Ayurveda. So when do we come to a point where we say that, hey, you know, I want to, I, I don't think this is working for me and I need to remove out or expel out the doshas because I'm not able to balance them internally by my lifestyle choices or my diet choices or my herb choices. So uh, it is only when, uh, you know, these shamana methods don't work uh, to reduce the aggravated dosa, uh, doshas only then is Shodhana or an Ayurvedic cleanse indicated. Now, there can be very good Vaidyas who can identify from the outside looking at a client uh, by saying that, hey, you know, I, I, I think that the Shamana route is going to take a longer time and let's zero in and let's do a Shodhana because it's so aggravated uh, for you right now. And if the patient is prepared, if the client is prepared, we don't use the word patient here, but if the client is prepared uh, to undergo the process, then, and if it's educated enough, then it can happen very quickly that we are able to share the whole process very quickly. Now, something that's occurred to me in my clinic is that people who come, who, uh, who are novices to Ayurveda, for them, it becomes too much to go straight in into a shodhana process. So there's always a little bit of a handholding and an understanding initially and trust building that needs to occur for people who are completely new to this process. However, uh, I do see an increasing need for doing, offering more and more shodhana and I've started doing that in my practice. And uh, you can see good, uh, very good results if we are able to streamline it. Although it is a very difficult thing to do if, if you're not mentally, uh, mentally prepared for what the whole process is really going to look like. So Shodhana and Ayurvedic cleanse is definitely something that can uh, make a big difference for a lot of the chronic conditions, you know, in terms of um, uh, skin disorders, migraines, neurodegenerative conditions, musculoskeletal dis disorders, um, renal urinary tract uh, conditions, digestive, uh, chronic digestive issues. All of those, there are very good studies by now, also coming from India, uh, which, which show uh, the impact of the process. So there's a lot of positive there, but there's a lot of caution that we need to have before and what kind of caution we need to have is what I want to focus on um, at this point of time. So it is to be done only after ama is digested. And this is very crucial because I think this step is getting missed by almost everybody who's offering only shodhana, PK um, therapies, right? The ama reduction has to occur. So what, what's, what's happening right now is that you have people who are offering, you know, uh, group cleanse, group Ayurvedic cleanse programs, right? And all of them, they do have some part of some pachana for two, three, four, five days that they offer. But sometimes the ama is so much more that I know that it becomes, it's very difficult for ama to that chronic uh, ama to go within those four or five days. So it will make a huge difference if we are able to see the, uh, if we are able to actually um, uh, address the ama and then go to the practitioner who's offering a shodhana process or a shodhana program, okay? So, that armor digestion process um, is something that we, we'll talk about later. I've talked about it in the earlier uh, sessions as well. But coming back to the cleansing, which other, uh, why should we do it only after armor is digested? It's because if you do it 
after, uh, if you do it before that, the stickiness of the ama, in the stickiness of the ama, when you're trying to push certain and get, push the purgation, uh, there's a resistance. And that resistance of the ama gets the vata to forcefully go in the opposite direction. And it creates havoc. It can cause more pain. It can cause more bloating. It can cause more indigestion, erratic appetite, um, sleep and mood disturbances, right? And some of these things are not talked about because we have not done post surveys of how many people, how many people had negative consequences. Nobody is even going to talk about it because we are, we are, we are, uh, you know, we are in a promotional game. But that the negative consequences exist, and you know th that was also one of the premises to why Maria suggested this talk. Because she's been in here for ten years. She has seen and interacted with so many students of fire with and she's seen the she's seen this, and as all as have all of us done. And I feel that one of the key process to ensure that safety is there is to ensure, from an Ayurvedic perspective, that ama is digested before we instate any of these. So <clears throat> this is like, uh, you know, it, it's essentially like pre-treating stains. So you have to pre-treat the stains and then you have to do the cleanse procedures, okay? That's the analogy. Now, what are the cleanse methods? So a lot of you are already, you know, very advanced in Ayurveda and some of us are new, new people. So uh, we have, uh, vamana, Virechana, Basti, Nasya, Rakta Mokshana. So you have five different procedures uh, clearly for, uh, for doing the cleanses. And the one that's most popular in the United States is the Virechana because it's easy to do at home, etc. And it's also, um, it's also safe and it's also legal. Um, the other processes, they really require more expertise, a kind of a different kind of a setup and more regulations uh, to, um, uh, to do uh, safely okay, and effectively. Now, Vamana is really the emesis. It's done for a lot of kapha disorders where you're actually vomiting out. And there is a process to it where you're giving, you are given um, certain agents with uh, with, um, uh, with a very supportive environment and you are, Vamana cannot be done by yourself alone at home uh, without, uh, you, you know, in its, in its deep Shodhana method. So I will, I will share towards the end as to what are the ways in which you can have the benefits of it safely at home. Uh, and it's one of my favorite processes to use even in the clinic. But the full-blown panchakarma, uh, shodhana, vamana uh, has to occur with a therapist looking over you, someone measuring your blood pressure and ensuring that you know, you're know you okay. Uh, it's often done for obesity, skin disorders, et cetera. Virechana is primarily for pitta, but it also secondarily drags down the vata. So that is something that, uh, that helps to also with a very wide range of problems, right? Because Vata and Pitta are the biggest players for so many diseases. Uh, and uh, we all know, people in Ayurveda know that Vata has, there are 80 types of diseases with Vata, 40 with Pitta and only 20 with Kapha. So these guys are the you know, troublemakers. And uh, Virechana handles that, both of them pretty well. Uh, basti is for Vata, and Bastis are essentially enemas, and enemas are of different types. So an enema is not just like a colon cleanse, coffee enema, which is like just dragging the poop out, but Bastis is a way in which you are able to do multiple things. Depending on the agent of, that you use in the Basti, you can reduce someone's weight. Depending on the agent, you can build someone's weight. Some things are for neurodegeneration. Some Bastis are for diabetes and there's some some for, you know, uh, as a Rasayana Basti is, as well. So it's just magical. That whole landscape of Basti is very un, untapped. Untapped potential lies uh, for that. 
So hopefully, you know, we grow as a profession to a point where we are able to offer all of this in a nice regulated uh, setting, then we will be able to impact health of people in a very fundamental way if bhaktis are introduced. Um, I, I have personally done my work in Parkinson's disease with Basti, and recently I've been reading some amazing uh, literature coming with, you know, the gut microbial diversity effect being affected by uh, Basti and different dis disorders. So a lot of science there, um, and hopefully one day we'll we'll be able to do science, uh, emergent science in our with our conversations uh, like this, you know, once we are ready. So that's a busty domain so you can tell i'm very it's very close to my heart um, uh, in terms of the potential impact then we also have nasias and nasias are used for a lot of head neck uh, conditions and insomnias and anxiety and you know chronic sinusitis and uh, migraines and all of that nasias uh, can be used very effectively I also do use nasias as uh, in some ways to do an armor, a test of a test of how much armor someone has, and um, uh, there are different agents that you can use for that. This therefore it can do it can address either vata, pitta, kapha. You know you can use oils, you can use some uh, pradhaman nasias in terms of powders, and it can address all of that. So they, that's also a cleanse, intense cleanse method. Okay. Uh, then we have Rakta Mokshana, which is uh, that you do for, it's essentially bloodletting and uh, you, you do it for Pitta and Kapha disorders. And this is something that is, was considered to be a very archaic, primitive, medieval method of treating diseases by just bloodletting, but it really makes a big difference on the mechanics and the nature of the blood supply uh, for allowing healing to occur locally uh, in certain skin disorders and also systematic uh, issues like you know gout and uh, and um, uh, certain kinds of uh, uh, certain subsets of hypertension uh, and excessive blood um, uh, conditions, excessive pitta and blood conditions. So we have all of those methods which are there. So an Ayurvedic cleanse really is about all of these processes in the classical context, okay? Now, coming back down to what's occurring right now in the US and the seasonality with which different programs are being offered in spring and fall seem to be great times for people to create these programs for Ayurvedic cleanses. And I want to just take a step back and say that, hey, you know, seasonal cleansers were recommended by Ayurveda for people who are healthy, okay? And they're not recommended for people who are unhealthy. And why do I say that? It's because the doshas of the Vata, Pitta, Kapha, they have their own cycles and their own ways in which they aggravate and go down at every season. But that occurs only if your baseline is steady. If your baseline is rocky towards pitta, then you don't expect in your springtime the kapha to increase. No, it's going to be, you still have to address your pitta first in the spring if it is more aggravated. So therefore, that is a distinction. So... Uh, you know, for, for students of Ayurveda, they understand why kapha rises and wh where, why and when does pitta rise for the baseline states. And it's very, very good to know those that cyclicity uh, in which the body maintains its dynamic nature. And uh, that's what allows people to make different choices for foods, for seasons, etc. And also uh, have different lifestyle behaviors accordingly. However, when it comes to using the cleanses, uh, it is not to be done when there is ill health, just a blanket Ayurvedic cleanse when there is ill health, okay? I cannot stress this enough. Now, springtime is a natural aggravation of kapha for varied reasons, and therefore it is ideally a time for vamana and emesis. And we are not able to do a full-blown emesis, so in that, 
I do recommend to my clients and my students to use uh, the yogic process of doing Dauti, which is very safe and can be done at home with just some salt water. There's a process in which you can sit down and you can do it, okay? And uh, for summer, uh, there is a natural aggravation of Pitta in summer, and that is the time when Virechana is recommended. For fall, you know, is a natural aggravation of Vata. And ideally it has to be Basti. But like I said earlier, Virichana can help to some extent um, to reduce the Vata as well. And all of the Snehana pre-cleanse procedures which, have, which are there, they can also help to a good extent to reduce the Vata. So it is comparatively safer for us to do a cleanse at this point of time. Uh, uh, of the year rather than uh, rather than during the summer rather than doing a uh, rather than doing a virichana in spring and i'll come to come to come to that uh, for why um okay so um fall i would recommend the virichana and i would recommend deep uh, oil abhyangas and going to finding some local Ayurvedic therapist around you who can give you good Ayurvedic oil massages. This is a great time to do it because Vata is going to be aggravated. And I would prefer that you do those, um, do those massages as a part of the pre-treatment for the cleanse and also, but much more post-treatment for the cleanse because that will really rejuvenate you, okay? Now, this is, all of these have to be done seasonally like this, only if the other doshas are not aggravated by the way of diseases or imbalances. There's a typo there, or imbalances. And if aggravated, appropriate, appropriate cleanses can be done any time of the year. So they do, you don't have to wait for fall to do a virijana if your pitta is aggravated in March, right? So you can do that at any point of time. So what's the buzz with doing virijana? in terms of doing the laxation purgation. Uh, well, it is accessible, it is doable by yourself at home with just a little support, you know, your body is resilient enough. There's no need for someone to measure your blood pressure every 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it covers a broad range of diseases. Okay, now a very important point is that Virichana should be avoided definitely when Kapha is high. And this is one of the key causes to why uh, Virichana gives poor response, okay, apart from Ama. So Kapha is high. When Kapha is high, it's imagine that where, where does Kapha, where does Kapha lie? Kapha lies in your upper torso. It, it lies in your, um, it's, it's there in the stomach, it's there in the chest. And if the Kapha is aggravated, when you put the Pitta Virichana medicine inside, it's going to be spent in fighting the kapha itself, right? So it's not going to uh, have the due impact in the lower GI as it would uh, if the kapha was normal and it would have been able to then just go and do its job. So we really just do have to think about this with very simple common sense biomechanic um, concepts uh, to have an intuitive sense as to when should when is a good time to do these procedures. Now, yet it's important that whenever you whenever we do a virijana process, it needs an intentional space for three to four weeks. Okay, and why so? Uh, uh oh, I need to. Sorry, I made a timeline, and I'm going to just. Um, move out and show you the timeline by three to four weeks. I forgot to put that in here. Um, okay. Stop share and uh, I'm just going to start sharing again. Okay. So you see the timeline. And this is, uh, this is really 
you know, we talk about resolving AMA and resolve, resolution of AMA can be an in, indefinite process. But with guidance, I think it takes about two to six weeks at least. And we must commit to at least two to six weeks. And I have a little program for that. And that's what I will share because I've been trying to make it for my regular clients as well. And I'll share with you what I have come up with. Um, and then after the, you, you have a minimal amount of AMA, then you begin drinking the increasing doses of ghee for three to seven days. Then there's an external oil massage along with steaming for one or two days, depending on the procedure. Then we do the main shodhana procedure, which is on, the, on that one main day when it comes to Vamana and Virechana. And if it is basti, then you know that's a whole different trajectory in terms of eight days or 16 days uh, cycles. And after you do the shodhana procedure, the focus is to reestablish the agni, which is again a seven to 10 day process. And then, um, then as a rasayana procedure, um, and well, one main day is not right there, but rasayana procedure becomes like a forever thing after that, you know, agni and rasayana, maintain the agni and do good rasayana. That's a, that's a, um, a lifelong thing it can be, okay, but that mindfulness that gets established in this this time for how to how to think about how to navigate the foods and your choices and how to understand your agni that is very vital and it is i think the biggest takeaway from the cleanse programs okay so i'll go back to my powerpoint powerpoint okay so that's the three to four days and then we have post cleanse uh, uh, foods and medicinal resinas. And conceptually what we are doing here is we are increasing the Agni back again because there is an assumption that all, all of these medicines and procedures, the Agni has gone down and we have to rekindle it step by step. And we start from rice water to mung bean soups and then to kichdi. And I see a lot of programs offering just straight, okay, now you start eating kichdi, but kichdi is heavy to have, um, and the whole process is, you know, you, you, are, uh, you are igniting Agni from one to another, making it a, like a nice large fire um, so that you're able to digest more and more foods uh, while going out and have more nutrition, consume nutritious complex foods as you uh, move along. Kindling of Agni uh, is the focus and the mindfulness that we have with appetite. Oh, do I feel hungry? Okay, now is the time to eat this. Now this is the amount of hunger. Now is the time to eat this. So that part of the learning is the priceless and valuable part of the learning, which I really hope that people invest in to maintain good health beyond the cleanse. Otherwise, you know, it's just like you do the cleanse, you invest all of that and three, four, two, three, four, two, three months down the line, you're back to where you were and nothing has really changed and there's no transformation that this process is allowed in your system. So, you know, it becomes a wasteful exercise in my judgment, uh, you know, big investment and wasteful because it's not been, uh, it's not been uh, transformative enough. And oh, it's only with the Kindle Lagni that Rasayana is possible. And a lot of people, they pop Ashwagandha and things like that, just like that. Uh, you know, Chavantraj also just like that. Um, and when, when you do it, you're not really able to benefit from it completely. It becomes more supplement mode uh, rather than a complete resign, a rejuvenative mode. And those are, processes are definitely not supposed to be done with Manda or Vishama Agni. And I see a lot of people with Manda and Vishama Agni consuming Chavan Prash and things just like that. Um, and, and also, um, you know, thanks to COVID, apparently it's become very popular. And I, I don't know as to how productive it is to do that. We should talk about Chavan Prash, um, you know, Chavan Prash and when, how it was really actually designed to be used. It was designed to be used with a good appetite in the morning, uh, have it with milk and, um, that was, uh, that's almost like your breakfast, but I see people having like a heavy breakfast and then they'll have on top of that, they'll have a chavan prash. That's not the point. You have to first feed, feed the chavan prash to the fire and allow the fire to work only on the chavan prash along with a little bit of milk, if you're not vegan and, and then move ahead, okay? 
So summarizing the Shodhana goals, we have arm resolution, then we have dosha Shodhana that we are doing in the process, then we are doing the Agni kindling, and then we are doing the nourishing Rasayana, okay? Every goal, if each of these goals has its own indication and an end point, okay, is, is Ama resolution needed? Is assess and then end. Dosha, is it needed? How is it done? Then end. So that process of the, uh, that, that process detail requires a good, well-trained Ayurveda practitioners and of which there are many now in this country, thankfully, uh, you know, to handhold and guide through the, uh, through the whole journey. And, you know, I've also tried to summarize this when you're not in a Shodhana mindset on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, there are phases of healing as to how a Ayurvedic practitioner will guide you through the process. And the phase one, what we are focusing on is the Ama and the Agni. And the phase two, we are focusing on balancing the energies and the phase three, we are focusing on Rasayana and the nutrition and the bodybuilding, okay, and the vitality, resilience, enthusiasm to live life. All of those aspects get covered in the third part. So, you know, uh, seeing, seeing that there is a little gap in the first part, the first part, the gaps that I'm seeing in, in the current situation, I'm trying to mitigate first by an AMA assessment program. And this is, I have created a little tool which, which is a part of my self-driven healing program, which is a free tool uh, for anyone to use. And it will unfold on the second day. You, you can check your AMA score um, and you can just check it as often as you want and keep a track of it. And for people who want guided support for AMA resolution, depending on your score, I've designed different, uh, different uh, programs and strategies and video instructions with some of the deeper nuances, tools, recipes, which are not just Indian, but global recipes. Um, and I, I take you in one step at a time when, without it being overwhelming so that you, you find yourself, experience the armor reduction in your body. And then you, are, then you know what is causing what, right? So that's the whole, whole idea. Because once the armor goes out, you know, Agni, remains naturally kindled. And once you understand that balance, Agni has excellent intelligence to help you maintain health. And that's what I really want to uh, share uh, through, the, through this program and through your own experience. So, and currently, well, it is a paid program that one I've invested a lot of time in making it. Um, and right now I, I can offer it at a 10% discount for attendees and referrals of people who've attended the session. And then once the first 10 people register, we can do a one group session for any problem solving. Okay. So this PDF of this thing, I will share with all of you and uh, also on the group. And this has the links to the program. So you can just click them and, and, and find it. So, well, that's that. Uh, that's that. Okay. Uh, Okay. All right. Any questions? And how was it? I hope it was. Yes. Any questions? You can feel free to come on. Yes, Sarita ji. Hi. Uh, you'd mentioned that you you are able to assess the level of ama through nasya, like through through nasya. Like yeah, the uh, through nasya too. Uh, could you elaborate a little more on that? Yes. Okay. So Nasya is one of the ways in which uh, it's, it's one more input. Okay. So uh, the tool that I've created has like, you know, based on the questions, depending on your answers and the weights that I've created a weighted tool, because if someone tells me, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, a certain, um, um, certain uh, symptom, is to X amount, you know, how much weight would I give it for AMA, my AMA assessment? So I've actually put it down in that. However, apart from that, there are two other ways in which I can have more insight into AMA and wellness, definitely pulse. Um, and the second one is, um, second one is this Nasya process. So 
you know, one of my mentors in India, it's not a classical method. Uh, and he really, he, he made a mixture of dry ginger and jaggery. So there is a, there is a formula that I have that, uh, and, and that uh, liquid, when you put it in the nostrils, you know, when someone has, uh, and you lie down and you put one, one drop, you start with one drop. And if someone has ama, you know, you do not even feel the dry ginger, strong pungent dry ginger in the nostril and, you know, and then you gradually put one, two, three, four, up to 15 drops. So some people up to 15 drops, till the time you find burning, you can feel it, you know, in your sinuses around out here. And it's amazing because it really, um, when we, when, when we uh, streamline our chikitsa according to that AMA level, we, are, we, we get very good results also. And it, it, this thing is not just a, a assessment procedure, but it's also a therapeutic procedure for people with, uh, uh, you know, and, and it really helps pe some, pe some people with brain fog when there's an AMA component to it or chronic sinusitis, when they have this heaviness and dull ache around their sinuses, you know, throughout. So it becomes therapeutic also, that procedure. I've also used it for migraines and some people are able to, you know, dissipate migraines, uh, but not for everyone with migraines. You have to have, because migraines, you know, they, they can occur with uh, vata or they can occur with pitta. And we need to, we need to see that uh, distinction before we start, uh, before we use it. So uh, this is what, in fact, that mentor would use it in uh, camps that we used to do, you know, in India. And they would just make the clans lie down and uh, the students would do the procedure and say that, hey, you know, right nostril, the four drops cause the burning and the left one, oh my God, it's like it's gone up to, 10, 11, 12, and really tells me, tells us, you know, what is the intensity of the blockage. But that's very, it's more local. It's more local. However, you can assume it to be a manifestation of systemic, but it's more local assessment. Okay. So I can share that recipe with you, uh, Sarita Ji. You can, you can, you can try it. Uh, try it and do your own. I was just thinking that at some point we should be doing all of these camps here. You know, I don't know when we'll we be able to pull it off, uh, but hopefully we should be able to pull it off sometime. Hi, Cynthia. Okay, I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Go. <No>. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Hi, Dr. Nami. Hi. Hi, Shamna. Hi, hi. Hi, doctor. Actually, I just have a doubt. Like, uh, oh. you were telling about the group cleansing thing, right? Like, oh. yeah. <clears throat> so, within that many days, the, uh, like, AMA won't be digested. Like, but before that, they are doing some individual consultation. So, wouldn't that be helping, like, to detect them? And, uh, sure, sure. I'm sure. And, you know, different schools, different people do it differently. But, just ensuring, like, you know, I think that the start dates of group cleanses are the same, that, you know, they will start, right, at a certain mm -hmm. time. So I hope that they have more uh, flexibility, right? And some are doing it nicely. Some people may not be doing it. So mm -hmm. it's not towards particular schools, but it's more to educate that, you know, this is on one thing to be considered. Mm -hmm. uh, before. And I, I know personally that it does take longer to address AMA. Um, and so even uh, if we give different herbs to different individual also it will take different time or like so I don't know what is what is the uh, what is what is the you know uh, uh, what is the time period and the intensity with which you're giving the herbs because for chronic ama I don't know whether two three weeks would be enough even by giving uh, some mm -hmm. intense herbs you know so yeah, although it would be doing some some amount of it, and hopefully by following all the food practices and all of that, there would might not be new armor getting generated. What's important that is the message that armor needs to be, get reduced enough, 
Okay. okay, okay. People need to have the conversation with the individual by their own. Okay. So, because the timing of it, right? A lot of people, like for example, they go to India for doing panchakarma. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh yeah, you're planning to go to India. You're like busily you're wrapping up everything from here, and then you're running and you're getting onto a flight, and there's a jet lag, and in that jet lag, you're going and doing starting your procedures, and you're putting in so much oil, and you're doing all of that, right? So. It's different, but if someone's baseline is going to be low with the visit of the ama, or if they've been pre-treated from ama, then they can go and then they can plan it, right? Okay, okay, okay. That's that's the main that's the main point that I okay. would say because some of the negative experiences that occur or or uh, less effectiveness mm -hmm. uh, that occurs. This is one of the commonest, easily resolvable, modifiable culprit. Okay, you understand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Amiya. Okay, there are some more questions. Uh, okay. In general, which cleanses can be done in the US? We talked about that, right? So in detail. Is there any particular question uh, more about it? Uh, uh, well, you know, I don't know if I have um, covered, well, you know, bastis are also possible for people to do, especially the oil in the bastis. Uh, and uh, those can be done by good instructions from a vaidya and it just needs to be self-administered, okay? Because we are not allowed to, um, uh, no, one, no one is allowed to give something uh, other than per oral uh, currently in the US. So they can be guided. And a lot of people are using enemas of different things by themselves. So, you know, it's pretty uh, straightforward to do that. The uh, decoction-based, niruha-based bastis, they become very complex to use and uh, they, they are not currently covered. Uh, okay. And the other part is that, you know, it's very common for people to think that, uh, well, let me go into Panchakarma. So Panchakarma is equal to getting massages and Shirodhara and doing some Nasya's oil application and doing some yoga pranayama and, uh, you know, things like that. Um, now, those procedures are not Panchakarma procedures. They are not cleanse procedures. And that's something that you need to, we need to understand. And when the, those procedures are either pre or post panchakarma procedures, okay? So some of the oil massages, uh, uh, the preparations are such that it is a rasayana and it is actually helps to build the dhatu and some uh, build the tissues. And uh, some of the procedures, they are, um, uh, you know, they are, they are actually shamana procedures for vata. They are not shodhana procedures for vata. So when you're putting external oil, you're doing, it is a shamana procedure for vata, okay? So that is also very important to know what are the technical terms. So when people use massage is equal to PK or shirodhara is equal to PK, that is not appropriate. PK is panchakarma or shodhana. Is donating blood sort of a variation that can be used in for rectum function? Absolutely, we use that, and I do use. Um, I do you suggest doing that for some cases. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, yeah. Uh, can an Ayurveda cleanse be shortened to twelve days, assuming ama is treated prior? Uh, so the cleanse itself is definitely like if you what what do you consider to be the cleanse right it's the main day it is one or two days of uh, external oleation before and it's a three to seven days so it is definitely three three is like the minimum could be three plus two plus one a week um, of the procedure and then you have the another week of uh, doing uh, doing the what do you say the kindling of the agni but the kindling of the agni is not a static eat khichdi every day process it is you know gradually oh your fire is so little you feed it and then you make it bigger and now it's a little bigger so i have to feed it a little bit more so then you feed it a little bit more and then you a little bit more and then you know that's how you 
increase the agni and when you use that process you are able to know what foods are doing what in your system and you are able to keep the agni kindled because your best bet for long health and longevity is keeping the agni kindled so it is a it is a great opportunity to invest that one more week after the cleanse to learn how to keep the agni kindled how do we cleanse from phone radio internet and oh, 5g radiation and look at us we are like talking on zoom and stuff right so uh well i there are a lot of lot of hacks that people use for that uh, uh in terms of you know they have these devices and they have these uh some special stones which which take away the radiation um so there there is a lot of that um, you know i i'm not an expert in that field but uh, it would be it's definitely a problem uh, however one of the things that we can do is you know ensure that we don't have the wifi routers in our bedroom um and ensure that the phones are not charging in the same room that we sleep at least some of those uh, mitigation um um options we can use less if we don't want to become like you know fall off the surface of the earth and <laughs> be like recluses i guess uh and also being mindful about the choices of where you're showing up and what you're doing and you know mindless surfing and all of that is also definitely um an avenue that we can have okay thank you uh, what are your thoughts about water enemas if person doesn't feel comfortable with herbal or oil enemas so juliana i i am not a big fan of water enemas at all because i just to me um when i think water i think um, yes it's water it's moisture but still it is not lubricated you know so the opposite of dry in my mind is lubricated Okay. and vata is dry and the opposite is lubrication not moisture as much okay so because of that what occurs is that if you're doing a water enema the even if the water is warm so as to speak but because it is not lubricated vata can get aggravated and it can get aggravated in the seat of the problem itself therefore um it might not be best however some people when you are doing all of these enemas uh, you know the colon cleanses which people are doing with the waters they are doing it only to remove out the remove out the stool however again after the stool goes out there's a vacuum that's created and that causes a vata aggravation of a different kind now uh, some of these immediate goals can be met but there are again consequences of of those interventions and that has to be understood when we are planning it from an ayurvedic perspective okay because it is said shuddha chikitsa ayurveda you have to do shuddha chikitsa shuddha chikitsa is what that with something that it that it solves a problem and does not cause a new problem right because it will cause a new problem like maybe month down the line people will not be even be able to put two and two together that it was this that caused it so that those kind of situations need to be avoided and i have seen enough clients uh, had doing those uh, coffee enemas and those water based enemas and and having uh, copious amounts of vata so i would not personally feel comfortable uh, suggesting that the key distinction is this is the terminology for opposite of dry and opposite of dry is lubricated everyone uses the word anxious but no one really knows what anxious is it's like this really random word that that has been thrown at us when we enter into ayurveda it's just like sounds as sanskrit as and as foreign as um, as, as another sanskrit term because no one really know knows what anxious is but lubricated everyone understands okay so that's great I mean it's good to see you Tracy Maria Mridu we are at the end of the hour and hi you can show your faces 
and may, maybe can we all come on can we all come on the screen and i can take a screenshot dr namia i actually came in with a whole bunch of questions today oh you and did okay did. And you, know, sure, you can you can i can take one or two more if you want but uh, i'll just take a screenshot first okay it's so nice to be with around with girlfriends. I think I, I, I like doing these sessions just because I like hanging out with you guys. So <laughs> Okay. All right, tell me, shoot. No, do you know the interesting thing is the questions that I had we don't ended up not being relevant based on your views of the cleanse um you know when we we're bombarded right now all of us because of the fact that we're somehow involved in wellness or ayurveda we're bombarded by every restaurant by every rogi by every school by anything that's wellness or ayurveda related to messages that we have to start our fall cleanse now um and I had some questions really around that, but you managed to really kind of address the fact that maybe we don't all have to start our fall cleanses right now. Thank you. Thank you. That's my key message. I'm such a naysayer. I think everyone's going to hate me. But <laughs> well, it even goes, yeah. I mean, as an AHC student, it even goes against some of what we're even being taught, taught right now, you know, that, you know, these seasonal cleanses are, you know, such an important part of our dinacharya, our seasonal routines. Um, so it's kind of eye-opening, your views on this are kind of eye-opening because they do go against even what, you know, we're being taught. Yes. I don't want to say against, they don't, they don't, they don't 100% align with what we're being taught. Right. But they align 100% with the most important thing, which is manage the ama. Right. Right, manage the ama because the ama, when the ama goes out, agni comes, and you know how to manage your agni, the doshas remain in balance, and you're able to put in the good quality nutrition. Then you don't even need all this stuff, right? Because that, and yet, uh, having said that, once you are in that stability, then next time when fall comes, then you will be ready to do the fall cleanse. Because you know this is your baseline. Your baseline is maintained with. But you say that, hey, I'm so out of whack and I need a fall cleanse. Let me all just start applying all sorts of oil everywhere all together. Then, you know, it is going to be a problem. So that's the, because the oil is also going to increase your ama, you know. So, you know, I'm trying to sort of see what people are, are offering right now. And I, I, I feel that that part needs to be, uh, taken care of. So one one of my clients just recently asked me, "Do you want to do the cleanse, or do you want, do you want, or should I join a group program?" And I, I was like, "Okay, I know your ama is okay, so you can join the group program, <laughs> but you know, otherwise I would have helped you with it." So that's the that's the that's the thing. So yeah, awesome. The whole whole idea is the mindfulness of where is my body at? And that is the, that's just the focus that we want to get back to. And then, you know, we have the internal sense of what we need from our environment to, to, to regain that balance. And that, that, that part uh, we should not miss in all of these, you know, products and rituals and creating all of these uh, the spaces um, which really eat up our limited uh, time and energy and resources from other things that we got to do. Dr. So, Nami, I have a uh, question or rather a point to make. So, yeah, so uh, from what I got, um, like we first, I, I think it's very important that we do this on a daily basis, right? Just right. observe our body and uh, see why, where we are at. Yeah. And it's so important for us to know that, okay, today, what is going on is, I mean, which um, dosha is out of whack or is that, is it uh, on a daily basis that we need to keep a check or is, and if it is required, is there a way that, um, or maybe in your next session, if you could take up something like that, like, okay, for our daily observe, 
observant, right? I mean, yeah. how do we know uh, what we need to do to keep so the doshas observ- in balance? I would I would put it down to two or three things. Daily observations is appetite, appetite, appetite first, because that's where your physical, you know, it shows that, okay, your previous meal has been digested and now you're ready for the next meal. Understanding when, uh, what food I ate, how long ago was it, then what activity I did and how quickly it went through my system. And it's like, okay, now I'm hungry again. Understanding the, um, understanding appetites, the way in which it's coming back in your case, and if it takes very long to come back, then you say, okay, then is there an ama or manda agni situation that needs to be resolved? So appetite is the first step, Mridu. Okay. Second one um, is understanding energy and understanding stress. And a third one would be stools and motions. These are the four things that I would, re- you know, see. And it doesn't require anything else. It doesn't require any external um, input or funky software to do it, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then learn which are the tools of how to how to fix it and how it's radiating in you and how do you fix it. And that's what I've actually put down in the program. So the phase one healing program, I've actually sort of saying that, okay, people who come to me as a, like, I give them uh, Ayurvedic herbs and all of that, but then, uh, after that, uh, what what occurs? You know, you uh, uh, it's not just about herbs and uh, just about you know tr- the transient uh, phase specific food advice. I need them to be on their own. So that's when I that's how I created that pro- how I'm sort of designing that program because anybody who does an appointment should also do that separately. So then they don't have to keep coming back to me. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so that's that's great. Awesome seeing all of you lovely ladies. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye, Amy. Lovely to see you. Bye, Maria, Sarita Ji, Tracy, Mridhu. Seva Ayurveda. I don't know your name, but Kalpana, Mridhu, Shamna. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Dr. Nami. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. It happens once a month, right? You're looking so amazing and refreshed today. (laughs) Not me, right? I put oil. I'm full of oil. (laughs) Awesome. You need it. Okay. (laughs) Bye. Bye, sweetie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra.